Hello, so today we're going to look at something else that you can help you with your VTTs and what we're going to look at today is Dungeon Crawler VTT UI and Zone Tiles. This is by a company called Inkforge and you can find it on DriveThruRPG. And I saw this advertised on the ICRPG Discord and it's designed for people that want a simple interface um, on their VTT and it uses zones. It retails for $4.99 or £4.50 and it's primarily, um, primarily designed for Roll20. Now I don't really use Roll20 but I thought I'd uh, buy it to put into Roll20 see how it works in there and then try it in a couple of other um, VTTs or other solutions to see what we do. So when you purchase it you get a zip file and in the zip file is the a PDF of the user guide and three uh, folders of images. You've got the backgrounds which are these backgrounds here and they're all blank. You get some zone tiles like so and you get a few other extra uh, bits and pieces um, as a fantasy and a horror background and I'll show you how all these work in a second and some hand-drawn tiles as well so let's go over to roll 20 and you create a new page and the first thing you need to do is alter the settings and this is all detailed in the help guide so the first thing you do is you've got to set the width and height of your background so you need to set it to a width of 30 and a height of 20 and you want to tick off the grid enabled and that will give you your canvas the next thing you need to do is go over to your collections, to your images, and you need to upload all your files. And that's a question of clicking the upload button and dropping those files from the UI onto the onto here and I'll upload them. As you can see, I've already done this. Once you've done that, you might want to create some folders add a folder and then when you click on the folder it will appear blank here and then drag the images across so I've done it for all the VTT backgrounds uploaded them all here I've also done the same for these zones uploaded all of them and put them in here so now we've got the zones up what we want to do is make some rollable tables so we go if we go over to our collections and what you're going to do is add a table. So I will open up this one here to show you. So you open it up, click add item, and then basically when you click add item, you can drag the UI across there. And you want each one of those in the background, add them all. You want to untick the box there so that players can't go from the table. So that's your background's done. And what you need to do then is click on token. Helps if I use the right token. So that's our. We need to change this to the map and background on the left hand side. On our UI background, click on token, and that will give us the first token in the, the box here. And what we need to do is we need to resize this. So on the arrow, click on it, click advanced and set dimensions and you want to set the dimensions to the same as the um, the background which is 2100 by 1400 click set and now we've got an image the same size as our background and if I zoom out you can see it completely fills the screen up what this does is this selects the first background that uh, you've got and what you need to do then is if you want to change the background you want to click the 
the UI token or multi-sided and choose side. And now you'll get a list of all those tokens and we'll set this one to we'll set this one to red, click choose, and that will now change the background image for our UI. So we do the same with our tokens. Upload the tokens to a folder, then make a folder with all the different um, files in them, the token files, and they suggest that you put the empty file in first. So we will now go to our objects and tokens layer. Or you can put it on the map backgrounds. Um, I'm just going to use the objects and tokens layer. And we're going to place a UI token. And because it's the first one, it will select the empty. And again, we need to resize this one. So right click it, advance, set dimensions. And these have to be 350 by 350. Click set. And there we have our first token. All we need to do then is Control C and do Control V a number of times, one for each token. And this will set up our zones across the panel. As you can see, we've got now got nine zones. And each of these is going to be a different terrain or, or can be the same terrain however we set it up and there we go there we've got our our nine zones you may be better off sticking in this background layer so that it stops players clicking on them um, you need to play with this so if you want to change one of these it's a matter of multi-side choose side and then scrolling through the one you want so for example you have if you've got, uh, you've got a road running down the side here, <coughs> it's a matter of having the road. <coughs> and you can see it's very quickly, you can alter the sides. Maybe we've got the path running down the side here. And then we've got some grass on the side. And you can see it's quite quickly quick to change the types of terrain. So now we've set a new path up. And all it means is that all you need is one f um, page on your roll 20. And let's have something different here, shall we? Just for, let's have the ends at a lake. Okay. So now we've got the interface set up. On the left hand side here you've got two uh, boxes where you can put images. So let's go back to my art and see if I've got anything in here that I can put in here. Um, yep, so let's say I want to stick this over here. I'm going to resize that. Let's try 500 by 300. There's probably a way I can do this uh, by grabbing the, the sides there. There is, yeah. Bit awkward to grab hold of. So let's grab my size there. So I could have this image there for them on the top. I could have maybe something atmospheric down the bottom. Now, if I want to add the name of, so maybe the game, go up to my text tool here. And let's type in my ICRPG game. I can change the text color and make it bigger. Maybe. See, you can tell I'm not very uh, used to uh, using ICI, uh, using Roll20. <coughs> so 
But yes, if you know how to do this, yeah, you can change. You can change the. Uh, I think you've probably got to click on that. That's it, and change it that way. You know, there'd be a way to do it. There's the game there. Now the other things you've got, you've got um, up here. You can put the target number if you so wished. Uh, you can either type that in again using the text. Um, I think somewhere I might have the target number. So for my game, I'd put plop that in there. There's my target number. Down the side here, we've got uh, spaces for uh, other dice rolls or timers that we, if we wanted to add down here. If we want to put our players in, let's have Adam, Haley, and John. And as we've learned, let's go back up to here, click on it, and let's choose that to black text. Of course, you can do this before the game starts. So there we've got our, our three players' names. And let's have some tokens for them. Um, I'm just going to use the tokens I've already got in here because um, I was running some aliens once with this. So we could bring our tokens in. Resize that to fit in the box. So that's Adam's token. There's Haley's token. And we'll get another one over here for oops, John's token. So you can put the player's tokens in the bottom here. And then you'd also have the tokens on the map as well. So for example, whichever zone they're in, you would have them here. So you could refer to them from the, the top and bottom. And as they're moving zones, you're just moving them across here. You're putting any of your monsters in the different zones as well. And for any zone game like Fate or ICRPG, you can see that um, you've got all the UI. When you do your dice rolls, you just do it normally as in chat. Um, and then can I remember the... And then drag the results out if you wanted to. There's a way to, to drag it out, isn't there? I can't remember. Um, you used to be able to do it. And you can put your dice rolls on here if you needed to do it. There is a way to do it. I just say I'm not very au fait with the um, Roll20 interface. So there we go. And then when you're changing it on the fly, um, they move to a new area. They see when you get to the edge of the, the map, you want to go somewhere else. It's a matter of choosing a new side, where they're going next. So it's it's nice and simple, and the rollable tables works really well in Roll20. So that's the Roll20 version. Um, if you haven't got Roll20, you could also use Google Slides. So let's have a go. I've not done this yet. So we'll start a new Google Slide. Of course, Ink Forge UI. So, the first we need to do is we need to sort the background out. So, do we we'll get rid of these boxes here? Now, there is a way. If I can be find the member, there is a way to sort the background out. And let's just upload it from the um, a file first. So, our background files. So, we'll use.
So that would be your um, your background and draw the tiles on. Now there is a way that you can actually set this to your background. And I'm going to see if I can remember now how to do it. Um, the preferences, no. It'll come to me eventually. Background, change background. There we go. So if I use that as the background, should we pick the uh, fantasy one this time? Have it something a bit different? Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's be dangerous. So we'll have a look. Extras. Let's see. Oh, this is the, the horror one. So we can get rid of this one now. So now that is set as the, the back scene. Um, so people can't click on that. And then we need to import our tiles over that. So we're going to have to import our images. So insert image. The downside of using this way now is we're going to have to do them each individually. So let's get our cobblestone in and we're going to have to resize it. Now what you could do is insert a new slide and put all your images on here so you don't have to upload them each time. So let's copy that. Put it on here and we'll store all our images here. So we've got insert images and let's do all of these. <clears throat> and they're all going to be weird and wacky sizes, but we can soon resize them, get them all the same. And I'm pretty sure if Get them all the same sizes. And then you can store them all here. Do you see they come in all at different sizes? They must have been rendered different. That's our blank one. So once we've got them all set up in our sizes, <coughs> we can um then just after of copying them and dragging them across to our UI again with our tokens and have we got any tokens saved on this machine I probably have done uh, let's have a look um, So we can put our tokens on here, put our monsters, our different zones. <clears throat> we can have our players, our images down the bottom. So let's say this is one of our players. So we can put our players tokens down the bottom here. We can add our text. So this is Brian. So as you see, we didn't roll 20. We can add all the players here. We need one, um, one screen. So as you set all your zones up here, you can share the screen move the tokens around, do your dice rolling and audio with Discord. Um, what I often do if I'm using it this way, when you share it, and I want to bring in new slides I, that I want to, I can insert slide, new slide, and uh, you can either import a slide from uh, another application. Um, get rid of that slide, not that slide. So file, 
imports loads. And then what you can do is if you set up other ones, um, other presentations with slides in, you can import them from there. So um, I don't know if I've got something set up. So when you click on one of your presentations, it will give you a list of all the slides you've got in there. So you could import a slide from there and then on the fly, and then that will add it to your left hand side here. So maybe I wanted that image set on the left hand side here. Same with your dice rolls, you can import, uh, put your dice symbols on there, move your, your um, characters onto the sheet to run the different zones. So that's how you can do it in slides. And the good thing about having the background image set is that at least then the players can't click on that. Um, obviously they can click on these and bugger these around which I've had before with players clicking on the wrong token so you've got to be aware of that. Unfortunately there's no way to lock it. So that's another way of doing it in uh, Google Slides. Uh, my VTT of choice is Map Tool. So let's have a sling across to there and see how I've done this in Map Tool. So not so easy in Map Tool. In the background layer I've got the image which I have to resize. So it's a matter of dragging the image across into there. I've got in my object layer I've got my empty slides. I've got six my nine slides in there. And in my hidden layer I've got the, all the other ones that are available and I suppose that I really should have a spare one of these in case I delete it in the object layer as well in the hidden layer let's move that to the hidden layer so if I want to um, put in some terrain now it's a matter of going to my hidden layer copying it, pasting it, getting it to line up and changing it to the object layer. So we'll do this, we'll delete that one, put another one in there. Um, let's grab one of these. Go to the object layer, delete, paste, delete, and paste. So if we go to what the players can see, the hidden ones will, will disappear from their view. All they see is what is on here. So that is the way you do it. Um, you can import your the tokens on the top here um, the text there is no proper text tool in map tool there's only the drawing tools which does it at one size which is a label so um, it's a matter of putting labels on which I've done here um, but that's probably on the object layer I'm guessing or maybe even the background layer. Um, text tool, there we go. Um, all I can do with the text layer is change the color and the background. Um, I, I can't resize it at all. They're just labels. So that's the downside with map tool and the same with up here. Uh, I've, I've done the label up here, but I can't resize that. It's just a small label. I'd have to do it outside in GIMP or something else like that. Um, the good thing is with this, I can add um, my assets nice and easily. So let's add some assets. So if I'm to bring a token in, create a PC, this is Brian, 
I think I probably want to resize and make him. There we go. Um, let's bring another one in. So there we've got our player token. So switch off snap because we don't need that. So our players can move between zones. We can do our normal dice rolls. Um, if I want to use dice, have a, a dice on there. Um, let's say what across. So I need markers. I can put my dice over here on the side. So in five rounds, something's going to happen. I can put that to the side. I've brought a couple of images in. See a map. So it's workable. Um, the downside is that it takes a while to um, to, to change these over. Um, another way of doing it is have them all these on the uh, to have them on the hidden layer is to have them on the object layer but hide them um, when it's on the object layer it's visible to players if I switch off then as a player they disappear so that's probably the easiest solution to swap me to stop um, go, going between layers is to switch all these to the object layer Zoom up here. Let's switch all these to the object layer. When we go to the object layer, we make all those not visible to players, and all those not visible to players. And that makes it a little bit easier now when dragging things in. I can just copy that across. And change visible to players. So in my player view, you see I missed one there. That's still on the back, the hidden layer. So let's get rid of that. Move it across. Visible to players. So now there's my new map. And all I've got to do is just share this one map with the players. If I want to change objects, it's a matter of just changing these over. So yeah, it uh, can work um, on map tool as well, but obviously roll 20 is optimum for it because you can change the tiles nice and easy. So over and all, all in all, um, I paid £4.50 for that. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, gives some ideas. So I hope you find this useful and I'll uh, catch you all on the flip side.